Casey likes it, is step by step. Okay? Now, when we look at a problem like this, when we have to solve, basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to solve the problem, right? And when we're trying to solve this, the basic understanding of solving was finding the values of x when y was equal to 0. So the first step that I asked you guys to do when solving a problem like this is to set your equation equal to 0. It doesn't matter what the equation is or what the function is or how it looks. You want to get all the values on the same side, and you want them equal to 0. Does everybody follow me with that? Yeah. OK. Then the next step was since it was set equal to 0, the reason why we want to use 0 is so we could factor it. Now we want to factor this because we have more than one x variable. So the factoring technique that we used was this a times c method, right? Because again, go back to actually our last statement, is there anything all three of these terms have in common that I could factor out? No. So I, therefore, I can't factor out the GCF. So now I'm going to use my, uh, my diamond method, which I do a times c and then b. a times c, a in this case is 1, b is negative 8, c, b in this case is negative 7. So what I have is what two numbers multiply to give me negative 8 and add to give me negative 7. This is what we've tried to practice over and over and over and over again. So you could say negative 8 times positive 1. So you'd write those new terms in here. And then since my a was equal to 1, these were my two new factors, right? So step number two was to simply factor the expression, right? And the reason why factoring was so important is because now, once it's factored, we can now apply the 0, zero. product property. So step three, step three was to apply the zero product property, which tells us to set each of these equal to zero. OK? Now, the last step, step number four, is to solve, right? Because that's our whole purpose, finding the values of x. Step, step three was to set each um, is equal to zero. So x equals eight. So step number four was to set them equal. Does that make sense with everybody? Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm trying to listen. Go ahead. No, you can do it like that. That's another way of doing it. That's that's nothing wrong with that. But when a is equal to 1, you can easily just take these two numbers and write them in as your factors. When we were first explaining them, yes, there's nothing wrong with doing it that way. But then you have to do an extra step to get it to this. But this is your factored form. OK? So this is your factored form. Then you'd have x minus 8 equals 0, x plus 1 equals 0. So your final answer is x equals 8 and x equals negative 1. Now, the next thing that I want you guys to write down with this